Surprised to see me back again so soon. <laughs> this is Billy Core from the FutureCarolinaCircleMall.org. This is um, Mon Tuesday, March 6th of 2012, and today we're going to we're going to be doing some upgrades to the Legend 406 CD. I'm um, first going to upgrade the hard drive from an 850 megabyte drive to a 10 gigabyte drive. Of course, you'll probably only see eight of it. And I'm also going to upgrade the CD-ROM to a 52-speed. And now, before we do anything, we need to up, we need to flash the BIOS. Now, the thing about these Hillary motherboards and and Packard Bell computers is that the Hillary motherboards, like this one, can only support up to two gigabyte hard drives. Anything above that, and I mean anything, and it won't the BIOS won't post. So before we put the new hard drive in, we're going to have to boot it up with this floppy disk I just made and we're going to update the BIOS. So um, and I'll try to get a copy of it to you guys if you want to try this at home. Oh yeah, that might, might help. And hopefully it will boot, All right? <laughs> so decorative screen there. Flash memory update utility version 3.2 copyright 1991 Intel Corporation. Patent bending. So we'll do as it says and press enter to continue. Ah, uh, which one do we want? I did this before with my 402 CD, but that was a year ago, I don't remember. I think it's this third one we need, okay. Okay, I guess this one. Okay. Let's, this is point of no return here, folks. If this works, great. If it doesn't, this Legend 406 CD will become my official paperweight. Okay, here we go. Okay, it's completed successfully. Reboot or reset the system now for this changes to take effect. Enter to reboot or press reset. Uh, I'll just go ahead and reboot from there. Okay, and it worked. Okay, we're just about ready to start upgrading. Um, turns out that I actually found um, an 8 gigabyte Western Digital Drive right here that I'm going to put in here instead. And for the CD-ROM, we have this um, nice 52-speed Sony um, CD-ROM drive that I think will work just fine in here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I believe I got the jumpers right on there. It's one thing I hate more than anything are hard drive jumpers. Huh. Thank goodness for SATA drives now. <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, the CD-ROM, the floppy drive, and the hard drive are all on one tray in these Packard Bell desktop systems. And to um, get to anything, you got to take out some screws first. So first, um, we're going to take out this top, this screw here on top of this um, metal bar here. Ah, there we go. And no comments, please, on um, working on a computer on 
fabric, um, I know what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> okay, that screws out. Now the next screw is this real teeny tiny one right here in this corner by the CD-ROM drive. So, uh, uh, try to unscrew it without stripping it. Uh, this one is in here vacuum sealed. Uh, uh, think here. Had another screwdriver in here I could try, but Oh, there we go. Screw's been in there for almost 17 years, and stuff like that's going to happen. All right, now, I don't know if you can see it, but we need to remove this screw right here on the right side. Go. It's slowly but surely coming. There we go. All right, now it you just pull everything out like so. Actually, first I better uh, unplug everything. Uh, floppy. Now the hard drive. Ugh, these Molex con connectors can be tricky sometimes. Uh, here we go. Okay, the IDE. Now the CD-ROM will remove the audio connector. IDE, and now the Molex again. Uh. Uh, there we go. Now we can take it out like so. And then there's everything right in here. <laughs> and here's the naked motherboard. <laughs> okay. First we'll um, start small and take the hard drive out. Now on the bottom of this tray will be three screws. This is what you want to remove. Do it like so. And the hard drive just slides right out. Okay. And Here's the original hard drive. It's a uh, Connor drive. Um, the, there's a model number here, but I can't make it out. It's What I like about Packard Bell hard drives is they put the format number right on a label here. This one is 556001. All right. And here's the new drive. I'm always, I've always been a fan of Western Digital. I think they make a really good hard drive. Okay. Now we're going to um, put the screws back in. Now we'll proceed with the next screw. It doesn't matter which screws you use, just as long as they fit. There we go. Alright, and the last one. Alright, and the hard drive is in there nice and tight. Now we're going to um, go ahead and replace the CD-ROM drive. 
And it's a little bit different on these 3x3 three three desktops. The screws are actually on the bottom of the drive. So, just out like so. Ugh. I was hoping the whole thing would move. Ugh. Second screw. I hope I'm not boring you guys. <laughs> the only thing about the way these are designed, there's only one hard drive tray. So you can only have up to one hard drive in here. If you want a second one, you're out of luck. Alright. There's the last screw. And course slide the CD-ROM out like so. This CD-ROM is an NEC drive and it was manufactured June of 1995. Very good month. All right now we'll put the new drive in. This is a Sony um, 52 speed drive and it was manufactured August 28th of 2002. So just slide it on in there it over. I gotta line it up first. Okay. Alright, we'll stick the first screw in there. It's best to put two on each corner just to get it going right, okay I must have knocked the screws out of place just right. Okay. Okay, I think we finally got it. Right now it's in there good. And we can put the rest of the screws back in. Now that the drives are comfortably in place, we'll go ahead and put the tray back where it belongs. Again, you make sure everything lines up perfectly or else you'll have problems. Okay, that ought to do it. Now let's put the screws back in. We'll start with this one here. Alright. Now this this teeny tiny screwdriver, a uh, hot screwdriver, this teeny tiny screw always has to go in right here. Any other big, if you put a bigger screw in here, you can't get, put the top cover back on. go and here is the last screw okay this is how the front looks now the new CD-ROM in there Oh, my back. Okay. Whew. All right, we'll go ahead and put the top back on it. this 
through it right here. I'm not going to bother with the top one. And I can only hope I got the jumper settings right or else I got to open this thing back up again. Let's hook it back up. Okay, got it back all hooked up, and now let's find out if um, all my hard work um, was worth it. Because if any of these jumper settings are right, you're going to hear me scream. All right. Boy, do I feel stupid right now. I forgot to plug everything back up. Hold on. Boy, that was that a blooper and a half. Ugh. Turns out I did not have any of the drive connections plugged in. I'd completely forgotten about it. Oh, and I feel like an idiot right now. <laughs> anyway, here is the real moment of truth. Gray is picking up everything. I'm not going to bother showing me reinstalling everything on here. Because I just don't feel like it <laughs> right now. Huh, must have Windows 98 on this hard drive. But anyway, we'll go ahead and shut it down and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. And as a bonus, um, because I forgot to do this, I'm going to show you how to um, upgrade or I mean not upgrade, but overclock a Hillary motherboard on a Packard Bell. Um, currently this is a 75 megahertz Pentium, but we're gonna overclock it to 100 megahertz. And here are the dip switches. All of these are currently off. Now to go to 100 megahertz, you need to turn on numbers two, hold on, Number, okay, we got number two, and you need to turn on number eight. All right. And um, so now we'll boot it up in a second here. Okay, let's see if this was a successful overclock. Alright, 100 megahertz, we got it. And we'll be, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.